So just general navigation. Uh, most functions on this calculator should be very familiar to anybody who's used an HP calculator. Chances are this is not your first HP calculator. But there are a few quirks that I thought it would be helpful to point out. Um, as always, these, well, this is the X register, this is the Y register, and then time you see an X here, that's going to be the value that is in the X register, so X squared would square the value in the X register. Uh, 10 to the X would be 10 to the power of whatever is in the X register. Uh, you have the square root of X or 1 over whatever is in the X register. Here, Y to the X, so 5 uh, squared, that would be 5 in the Y to the power of X, so 5 squared, take that, 25. And you can swap X and Y registers uh, here. Now this is a nice um, feature, the last X, and that's again been part of HP calculators forever, but I can take in the last value of X that I enter. So say I enter in 2, 2, and I multiply them together, and I get 4. I multiply that together, and I get 8. Well, now I want to enter, uh, multiply it by another 2. I could enter in 2, no problem with that, but let's say it's a different number. Let's say it's pi or 5 pi or something like that. Well, I can use my last x to bring in the last value of x, in this case, Four because I overrode it. Last x, last x, last x. So you, you can use it for stuff like that or for erasing something that you inadvertently put into the statistics registers. Um, another useful thing is being able to lock menus. So there's a lot of different menus here. Solver, matrix, integration, uh, mode display, the base, convert, assign, flags, program, front, yeah, a lot of different ones. But let's say I have my catalog open, and I want to keep that open. Like right now, if I take the absolute value of what's in there, my menu disappears. Let's say I want to do the same thing over and over again. So I could open up my catalog, and if I do it again, now that catalog menu is locked there. And if I take the absolute value, um, I can keep on doing it over and over. Take the cosine. Anyway, so you can keep on uh, doing the same thing. You can lock that menu in place, which is very handy sometimes. Another thing that is useful is um, when you are... Let's say you are in a, let's say you're programming. Let me get out of this. So I'm in this program, and I have locked my program function menu here. And now, if I use the up and down arrows, I'm navigating through this menu. But I want to keep this menu locked because I'm going to be putting in a lot of labels or views or returns or whatever. I can step up and down through my program by using the shift and step down, or that's, uh, yeah, forward a step, or I can do shift and back a step. So I can still keep my menu locked there and step up and down through my program, edit something, erase a line, put in a new line, etc. Uh, one other thing is if I'm here, I can't use any of these keys. So if I need to take the square root, you know, I go to put in the square root here into my program. Well, I did input because that's what I had here in the soft key. So in order to get those top uh, functions back, use this top function. So shift, top function, that brings it in. I can use the square root. I can even shift and do x squared. So that gives me the x squared. Unfortunately, that takes me out of my locked menu. Anyways, that's, that's one way you could do it while you're inside a locked menu, or inside a menu. Let me just see if it does it here. Yeah. 
But in that case, let's say I had my custom menu up. And I'm using this for different stuff. I do my top function, I do one over X. Yeah, it still gets out of that. But that, that that's what that top function does. And I think most everything else is covered in other videos. So to not be too tedious here, I'll go ahead and close it.